Our first scripture reading this morning is from the New Testament, from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 28 through 30. And that's found on page 888 in your pew Bible if you'd like to follow along. Listen to the word of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose, for those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. That's found on page 917 in your pew Bibles, if you'd like to follow along. Listen to the word of God. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your, not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now Miss Deb McCain will uh, give us our message this morning. Well, I made it up the stairs without stumbling, so that's a good sign. <laughs> Um, can you join me in a prayer? Father, I told you that I would do what you wanted me to do. That my life is yours. And I, I know that you're going to be with me as I deliver this message. And please, let it be for your glory and to be a blessing for anyone who needs to hear it today. In your beautiful name, amen. I'm not a public speaker. I could break out in a hot flash at any second. <laughs> Fair warning, okay? I have spent my whole life in church I knew a lot about God, but I never knew him. But he knew me. I grew up in a non-denominational church. I knew some wonderful people who really loved the Lord there. I also knew some very misdirected people there, and I happened to be one of those. I grew up thinking that my salvation was conditional. I grew up thinking that, and it's a terrible term today, but God was an Indian giver with salvation and grace. I grew up thinking that if I died before asking forgiveness for a sin that I committed, that I would be condemned to hell. So I tried to earn my salvation. I learned that 
maybe being busy in church, doing good works would earn my salvation. I did things like teach in junior worship. I was a treasurer and then a recording secretary for women's ministries. I helped um, prepare the Wednesday night meals at church. I did all those things. I was trying to guarantee my salvation. Also, in this church, I was taught that baptism was the only way to save you. If a person died on the way to get baptized, they probably weren't saved. I was in a women's Bible study, and the minister's wife was the leader of the Bible study, and I, I asked her, so what happens if somebody made the decision that they were gonna be baptized? And on the way to church, they're in an accident, they get run over by a beer truck, and they die. Are they saved? Her response was, well, you know. And she said that. Probably not, but it's up to God. I was, you know, a young driver. Every time I would get behind the wheel of the car, I'd say a prayer. If I get in an accident and I die, please forgive me for everything I've done because I don't want to go to hell. Church was very legalistic. And um, like I said, God was an Indian giver. Salvation was very works-based, and you had to be good enough. I was also taught that women were not to hold positions of leadership in the church. Women cannot be deacons, elders, or ministers. Women were to be silent. So we can just say that if I was at that other church at this time, Lightning would probably strike me dead, and you all would be ducking from the shrapnel, okay? <laughs> okay. Women could only teach other women or children. And then, when we were learning about the history of the, ch of the church, John Calvin and Martin Luther were kind of ridiculed. You know, their theology was wrong. Reformation was wrong. Restoration is the way to go. I was taught about the Lord, but not about how to love him, how to know him, and what his love was really all about. I went to women's retreats with the ladies from my church and I was always moved by the music and the message. But when there would be a prayer circle, everyone gathered around holding hands, and they would ask, are you ready to devote your entire life, your heart, your soul to God? I held back. This was not the God that I felt particularly close with. Remember, you're saved only if. Things start going wrong in my life. My marriage was disintegrating. It was a 27-year marriage. Ended up going through a divorce. At that point, I didn't feel very comfortable at that church anymore. And then it was really bad when someone would come up and say, I'll pray for reconciliation. And I'm like, don't do that. <laughs> At that point, I left the church because I it just was uncomfortable. And I went to a different church. I had moved. I had a new home, so I went to the church that was close to my home. Um, it was not legalistic at all. Yeah, I kind of somewhat progressive and everyone and everything 
was accepted in that church. There was no correction for sins. Everything was tolerated as far as I could see. But still, at this point, I didn't really trust or like God, at least the God that I grew up knowing. And sometimes when you rebel, you go to the other extreme, which is what I did. I decided I was going to reimagine God. I was going to recreate him. I was going to make him God, Jesus, who I wanted him to be, that he was all loving, no wrath, no rules, no nothing. He was going to be what I wanted him to be. And it was at that same time while I was on my job that at a medical facility, one of the um, nurses showed me how to do healing touch. I don't know if anybody has ever seen that. It's a type of energy healing. I thought, that's really cool. I'd like to learn how to do that. But I didn't know anybody who could teach me. And then one of my friends in Animal Rescue, Springers, yes, I'm in Springer Rescue, um, hey, I teach Reiki. I said, I don't know what that is. And she says, well, it's healing energy and... Um, you can get it from any ascended master, any angel. You can even ask it from Jesus. And I said, well, I'm interested in learning this, but I only want anything I do happen through Jesus, right? Oh, you can do that. I said, but remember, I'm a Christian. And she said, I'm a Roman Catholic, no problem. So I started learning it. And practicing it and very naive and trusting don't ever do Reiki don't ever let anybody do it on you it's demonic everything like that is deceptive and it brings nothing but problems into your life and poor Poor Kenny, he married me right in the middle of all this stuff. And he saw some of the um, consequences in our home. My dogs did too. It was being very unsettling in my home at this point spiritually. But at the same time, I'm going through this. The Holy Spirit was nudging me. At first, he was like a little child. You know how your kid gets a hold of your sleeve? Mom, mom, mom. And then gets louder and louder. Mom! And you're like, what? Okay? Got, you got my attention. It's time to come back. It's time for your Jesus moment. Get out of this. Now it's time to learn who God really is. At that point, it was a mess. I didn't know how to get out of it, but I just knew prayer, studying my Bible, taking the old glasses from my old church off so that I could read it read the Bible for what it really said. And I started discovering who God really was and that he loved me. Even with my mess, he loved me. And I didn't have to be perfect to go to heaven. At that point, I mean, I'm writing a list of everything I've done wrong. I mean, the list, and it, the list went on for months. I repented of this, 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 this. And he said, okay. Go on, don't do it anymore. And then I saw the scripture. 
It's becoming one of my favorites. John chapter 10, verses 27 through 30. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. There was my guarantee. So, in my going back to the Lord, really, for the first time, digging into the Bible, praying, and yes, Google is my friend, and I started finding people, good speakers, that I could follow and learn from. Yeah, I found a few false teachers, kicked them out, but reading the Bible, you can learn who's a false teacher and who isn't. I was in a support group on Facebook, called From New Age to Christianity. Still a member of it. It's been several years. Still there. Um, and then in my searching, it's like, Lord, where do you want me to worship you? Where do I go? So, of course, using Google, I want a Reformed church near me. This church popped up. And I started researching this church, and I realized, and I was also researching different denominations, and I realized that Presbyterian Church had several denominations. I wasn't keen about this denomination, okay? But God kept over and over this church, this church. So I went online. I started listening to Joshua's sermons. I critiqued him. Then I started um, listening to the Bible studies on Monday nights. And everything he said was so solid. So we came to visit for Kenny. I drag him along with me. Whatever I do, I drag him along. And uh, the first time we came, we thought, well, that was all right. I thought, I need to check it out again. We came back and I realized that everybody here was who God wanted me to be with. So you know my history. If you want more gory details, catch me later, I will tell you. I won't hold back. But something else I also realized in all of my my studying is our kids. We can't expect our kids to make it into heaven hanging on to our shirt tails, hanging on to our faith. Our children have to develop their own relationship with the Lord. I can't save them. Heck, I couldn't save myself as much as I tried. And recap, God loves you. He wants you. You just have to accept that. Nothing you can do will earn it for you. It's all about him. I never deserved anything. I deserved hell. But he had other plans for me. So now I don't have to worry. I can get run over by a beer truck now. I don't care. <laughs> so that's basically it. If you want to talk to me further, I'm open.